Welcome back to Cradle. We just got the synchronizer that we need to go put in Ida, because she's starting to malfunction again. So let's go... let's go give it to her. That sounds like a euphemism, I don't mean it that way. Wee! This is not how you're supposed to go down! Wee! It's broken, I'm gonna die! No, it's fine. Oh, let me go pick up my magic sword again. I know why there was so little information about me. August 15th was my first work day at the Gerbera Garden. I had come here for the first time with that group of kids, and the explosion occurred two hours later. Hmm. That's why there's so little information about her. Because that was the first time she had come here. Also, how come this thing is already in the air? I thought I, I thought you have to have it resting on the ground to even leave it. Oh wait, that wasn't resting on the ground. Huh. Okay. Or, or rather, that was resting on the ground, even though it was floating in the air. I guess it never actually rests completely on the ground. Anyway, to follow up on my previous thought, so that's the first time that she had actually come there, which is why there's so little information about her. And somebody searched for her name, like, right before the explosion. I wonder if she was assigned to come there, if she was meant to go there on purpose. Maybe somebody knew she was going to explode. I mean, I don't know if she's actually the one that caused the explosion, but I'm kind of assuming that she is the one that actually caused the explosion. I feel like that's the case. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Did you bring it? I did. Hold on while I replace it. Okay, uh, where does it go? Is it going her head? No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe I should have turned her off first. That probably didn't feel good. still messed up? No. Everything's fine. Then it helped. For now. We'll see if it lasts. How long will your charge last? About two weeks, maybe less. Say, know what I found? The correspondence of that operator, Mark, with one of his colleagues. There are some strange tidbits here. Here, listen to this. Oh, wait a minute. The only option I can choose here is, to be honest, it doesn't really interest me. Uh, what? Enabish, what's wrong with you? It should interest you, and it certainly interests me. There's obviously some sort of a conspiracy or something bad going on here. With Mark and searching her name, who... You know, she'd just come there for the first time, and there's an explosion right after, and... There's obviously something strange going on here but my only option is to be a complete dismissive dick, so here we go. To be honest, it doesn't really interest me. Wait, this is important. It's about your parents. What? Your parents. And me as well. Here, listen. It's a work correspondence. They're talking about research into memory transfer between people using telepathy. Telepathy? That's what it says here. They're discussing telepathy, and also mentions some kind of side effect. They refer to it as MPR-0. 
The NPR Zero effect. What is it? Well, if my understanding is correct, it's a sensation. A strange sensation experienced when one transmits one's memory. And what of it? Mark writes that at one time he was very interested in the matter, studying NPR Zero thoroughly after that incident with Ida. Hmm. That incident? We must have been acquainted. Even though I remember nothing about Mark or any unusual effects, and I cannot imagine what incident he's referring to. The incident with Ida, something related to a side effect from telepathy. So is there some strange side effect from the kids that was maybe bleeding off into the other people, or... Hmm. And what about my parents? That's here too. He recalls working at a research station before the garden was constructed. There weren't many people around in those days. His circle of contacts was limited to several work colleagues and his Mongolian friends. He writes, It's the family living in a yurt not far from the landing platform. That's your family, isn't it? Sounds like it. Where are your parents now? They died long ago. Why? They could have probably answered many of our questions. Maybe Mark even told them about me. Are you alright? Yes, maybe. Maybe he told them. Ah, oh, she's starting to malfunction again. Look at her look screen. Ida, is everything fine? Everything fine is an ordinary word. Just a note. Like the weather, chilly or warm. But we were looking for other research. Family records. Kind letters. So... What was that just now? More of the same? Yes. Again. Enabish. What? I don't think I have much time. Please, help me untangle this web with Mark. I want you to look through your parents' things. They may have left behind notes, journals. Understood. I will go look for them. Tabaha is here. Well, I'm afraid I've already looked through, like, pretty much everything in this yurt. Um, there's some stuff that's still locked up, though. Like, for example, this chest and this chest underneath it. Uh, as well as this. Isn't this... Yeah, this is locked, and it looks like it's got some sort of a... Something, some sort of a... Maybe speaker-activated, voice-activated lock or something. And certainly no keycard goes in it. See, so yeah, there's a couple locked things, but all the general notes are, are pretty much read. And I don't remember any mention of Mark. But then again, I wasn't specifically looking for Mark at the time, so... Who knows? Alright, let's go talk to Tabaha. I mean, Tabaha knew my parents, so... Maybe he knows something. I was like, wait, where's the... This doesn't look right. Oh, he came from the other direction. You know what? I want to take a look at this thing. I've always talked to him, and then he just rides off. I want to actually take a look at this thing. Looks like it's putting out some nasty fumes. But yeah, it looks... basically just like a train car that's kind of been converted to this newer form of technology. Yeah, it's got engines on the top for forward propulsion, engines below to for uh, vertical propulsion. Looks like it's got some on the side, too, so it can move back and forth. But the strange thing to me is that it travels through these... I don't know what you call them. Whatever these things are. Which, I was thinking it was some sort of, like, magnetic thing, you know? Or something. Like, somehow these, these power it. Like, it shoots through those. But, I mean, it's got, like, engines going on it. So it seems like it has its own propulsion. So then what are these for? I don't know.
Looks like it'll rain. Rain? Today? There'll be rain and thunder, and it'll sweep all profiteers into a ditch. What happened? You got any idea how much the search cost me? What? Well, that's right. I asked Tabaha to search for any mentions of... Uh, what was it? Was it Ida? Something. Or maybe it's just Corbera Gardens or the Explosion. But yeah, he was going to do some research for me. No. How much? One and a half. Is that a lot? Well, when and by Hungor has the internet ever cost one and a half? I'll pay you back. I won't take money from your destitute self. All right. Thanks. The information was paid for and delivered by a personal courier. You know, when he said... You got any idea how much the search cost me? I, I thought he was talking about, like, he was searching for it, and it triggered some sort of, like, government alarm, you know? And, like, agents came by and silenced him or something. I, I didn't realize he just meant it cost some money. I was actually really worried there for a minute. Very nice. So, what did you find out? Well, first of all, the Gabera Garden was never about entertainment. It was a hospital, I know. But what happened to it? The kids were all patients, yeah? Well, one of them had his container overflow. The passim exploded. That's what happened. Hmm, so it was one of the patients. So it wasn't Ida, then? That's all? Hold your horses. The story ain't so simple. Think. A person gets his body replaced and blows up minutes later. You might ask, how could they not have checked the container? Turns out they did check, and the container was empty. And yet, 15 minutes later it up and explodes. In other words, the capsule filled and overflowed rapidly. Pretty much instantly, in point of fact. There must have been a reason. Must have been, sure. But it wasn't found. All that's known is that there was a mishap with this particular child's transfer. Turns out, he had been talking to himself while in the booth. That was the mishap. Oh. As to why he blew up, that part's unclear. When he came outside, all his stats were normal. And he looked calm. You can see it on the video. Right. Yeah, I remember we learned before that there was an issue with one of the child's transfers where they were able to actually talk with themselves, have a conversation with their mirror selves. Like during the transfer or right around the time of the transfer. So that's what caused it. Doesn't explain how exactly that caused it, but that is what caused the rapid overflow. What's the video you mentioned? From the security cameras. You can see everything. Here he is, coming out of the booth in an M-body. Here's the sword acceptance ceremony. Here he is, getting off the stage and heading into the garden. He's walking evenly, takes a seat on the edge of a flower bed. Then, this part is a bit unclear. What's happening? A child comes up to him as he's sitting. A teeny little thing. Walks up and says something to him. Looks like the kid fancies the sword and is asking for it. Oh, the sword. That's gotta be the sword that I actually have on me right now. What sword? A toy. Just a shiny toy sword. They were given to the kids as presents after their body replacements. Endure a transfer, get a toy. Okay. Okay. So our hero hands over the sword. He's holding on to the hilt, hand extended. The child is trying to take the sword but can't. Why can't he? Because he's grabbing at the blade, which is holographic. The kiddo's fingers swish right through the air, through the illusion. I see. And then what happens? Then, nothing happens. It's the end of the recording. The explosion is coming up. Here's a grown-up approaching the kids. That's the transfer operator. So that's got to be Mark. He walks up to his patient and asks him something. The latter turns around and blows up a second later. And that's it. Doesn't clear up much, I'm afraid. 
What was his name? Mark, or who are you asking about? The one who blew up? That was Albert. Yep, so that was Mark. Mark talked to Albert. And then right afterwards, Albert blew up. I mean, to be so close to the explosion, Mark must have died, right? So I can't imagine Mark, you know, made Albert explode right then and there on purpose. Because that would be literally suicidal. And the other child? The little one? Don't know. He was one of the locals. Not sure how he ended up inside the garden. Uh... Have fun with your little mystery now, but I'm off. So the little one wasn't actually part of the treatment. He was one of the locals. Uh... Could that have been me as a kid? I mean... Hmm. How long ago was this? See you tomorrow? I don't know. It might be three, four days. Maybe a week. We'll see. Alright, take care now. Don't get caught in the rain. Hold on, Tabaha. I've got one more question. I told you everything I know about this garden. I got nothing else. It's not about the garden. It's about my parents. I wanted to remember something about my parents. Here. Oh, that's got to be a key to one of the, the things in the house. What's this? A key to the drawer of your Grandpa Botchin's bedside table. Where did you get it? Botchin left it to me. He said that if ever you asked me about your parents, to give you this key. So, that's what I'm doing. And I don't know nothing else. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tabaha. So I wonder if there's something special about the sword. I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I actually know where it is. Because honestly, I just found it by accident and it kind of blends in with the ground pretty well. Alright, there are mysteries to unlock. What is that? Flashlight attachment. That goes onto the end. Oh yeah, there is a flashlight over here, isn't there? I've never used it. I've never had a reason to use it. The attachment fits this flashlight, but I don't need it right now. Oh. But I want to know what it does. Well, let me pick them both up and put them in my inventory. Alright, what else do we have here? Butchin with wife. Combo Lama replaces his body stamp. Celebrations over the Mongolian Buddhist Association blessing the body replacement program. Wow, they got the Mongolian Buddhist Association to bless the body replacement program. There must have been a lot of trust. Extinct insects stamp. Birth certificate. First name, last name. Jigate Zambel. Jigate Zambel. Male. 2053. Botchin was the father. Sarne Bolden was the mother. Okay, that's... I remember a mention of a Zambel. Um, hold on. Hold, hold on. Where was it? It was around 
Mm. I think it was in one of these drawers, I want to say. And also, I think this picture. Yeah, a woman with a child. A sign in the back reads, Zamble, two years. So that's Sarnay and Zamble. When he was two years old. And then there was a letter. This is f from Zamble. Hello, father. Well, this is from 2053. So obviously this isn't actually... This isn't Chigate Zamble. Zamble Bachin? I'm confusing myself. Uh, I'm just going to keep reading. Train ticket. Leather case. Passport in the name of Bachin Dalha. Receipt for a scooter tire. <laughs> That's the key to this mystery, the receipt for a scooter tire. It all makes sense. Ida, you gotta see this. Okay, Bachin Dalha. So that's that's Grandpa Bachin, right? Bachin Dalha. So then this note... Grandfather is from... Uh... It's from Zamble Bachin, right? Or Bachin Zamble? It must have been Bachin Zamble. So from Bachin Zamble, this letter is from Bachin Zamble to Bachin Dalha. Or. Ah. Uh, screw it. <laughs> Grandpa Bachin's journal. On the inside are several brief notes. The two pages split by the bookmark are dense with text. It is a message for Enabish. I can choose to only read what's addressed to me or read everything. I'm gonna read everything. I mean, this is all meant for me to look at, right? Yeah, I'm gonna read everything. Okay. So this is from 2058. Well, well. Now the home of my son is empty, so fate has decided. I'm not complaining either. Providence knows best. All that's left for me is to pray for them. I'll head out in the morning. It's over 200 miles. Better not forget a gas canister. It'll be dark when I get there. The wake will go on all night, and come morning I'll be gone, leaving everything as is. Okay, the son of my home... the. The home of my son is empty, so this is after the explosion, right? The one that took his... His family, or, or most of his family? Right? But aren't I his family? Who... I'm Enabish. Aren't I his son? I don't know who I am. Bachin Dalha... Uh, Chigate Dalha... No, Chigate... Zamble. Mm. Zamble Bachin. Which one's the first name and which one's the last name? Ah. Providence has got a plan, to be sure, in which my role is a modest one. As for the baby, of course, I'll take care of him. I'll take him with me to Ulan Bator. I'm not so easily scared. Okay, the baby. So, is that Chigate, uh, Chigate Zamble? No use guessing now. These parts won't let him go, no doubt about it. Evidently, we're destined to live here. What other option is there? Only abandoning him. And that I will not do. He won't drink milk, he, he won't eat anything. What do I feed him? And this is from like a week later. He's growing so fast. Is it early for a two-week-old child to walk on his own two feet? And where did he go at night? I can't figure out what it is he'd found. Some kind of a device. Three days now he's been playing with it. Dragging it through the dust. Gnawing at it. I suppose he's teething. He stopped growing. Hasn't changed in a week. 
A five-year-old child is walking around the yurt. Keep walking, son. Your appearance doesn't scare me. But how is it that you look so much like him? I guess that's not for me to know. Providence has got a plan, in which my role is a modest one. My job is to pray. An air shuttle flew by yesterday. It's been a long time since we've seen one. I couldn't make out any people inside. Could be it's used as freight? What a meeting! Praise Providence, you reckless soul! If it weren't for Enabish, you, Tabaha, would still be lying in that flower bed. Wait a minute, who would still be lying in that flower bed? If it weren't for you, for Enabish, you, Tabaha, would still be lying in that flower bed. Tabaha was found in a flower bed? But it's a solid money-making idea. The passage is free, which is always good. The tires on the scooter won't need replacing. I'm gonna sell it. Look, there's something about the grammar of this last note here that's really throwing me off, and I don't really know what it's trying to say, but it's obviously describing when they first met Tabaha, which was uh, a good way to make money. And free passage, too. So yeah, Tabaha was kind of a, a savior. No more notes, only the letters left. Enabish, if you're reading this letter, that means your curiosity has led you into the past, to your forebears. Your parents' belongings are locked away in chests. I will give you the key with which to open them, but know this. No things will give you any answers until you've asked yourself the right question. Of all the possible paths, only one will lead you to this question. Find this one true path, and may my modest assistance ease your search. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Or Granddad. Come on. Do you have to turn my life into, like, a mystery hunt for the one true answer? Can he just tell me? Can, can he just tell me? You'll need a ray of phantom light to illuminate your path, and a wise clue to make the right decision at a crossroads. In this drawer lies a rounded object. Use it to obtain the ray of light. In a book of wisdom, you'll find a clue. Then go to my grave, stand on the largest stone, and take a look around using the ray of light. Look carefully, and you will see the spot from which to begin your path. Okay, hmm. Okay, so I'll get the ray of light if I put the thing on the, the flashlight. Gotcha. And in a book of wisdom, I think I know where that is. I think. In a book of wisdom, you'll find a clue. What is the clue to find the grave? Do I actually know where Botchin's grave is? I don't remember. Maybe I just forgot. Hmm. I think this is actually going to be fun. Alright, well, let's put this thing on that thing. You know, thing on thing. There we go. So is this like a, like a black light or something? I don't think it's going to reveal anything inside of the house. Because it's not actually meant to be used in here. But just in case, let me check. Nah, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Let's see, read the parable from the book under the altar. Well, you didn't have to spoil it. That's where I thought it was, but come on. <laughs> Find Botchin's grave not far from the yurt. Use the flashlight and the clues from the parable to find a key to the chests. Alright, so I need both a flashlight and the clue after finding the grave. So yeah, I believe it was one of these. I think it's this. Oh wait, no, no, I think it's this one. 
Out in the field amidst the stones, there stands a pair of wooden poles. Wait, what did that say? Uh, was that the clue? I don't know why that popped up and then just, like, disappeared. But I think it's talking about the poles that I saw outside, which I actually have not been to, so that's gotta be the grave, I guess? Uh, I guess I have everything I need? I don't know, that was weird. Yeah, I believe it's, um... Yeah, right there. Those poles, I think. Oh, yeah. Bachin Dalha. Lived to be about 69 years old. 69. Not a bad age to live to, but that's not that long. That's pretty short. Okay. Flashlight time. Ooh. Hello. Anything else? Nope. Looks like that's it. Hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I've got to say, this is, um, this is really implausible. If you think about this. Okay, so this is some sort of, like, special... Special paint, basically, right? Some sort of special paint that's been put on the ground that only shows up under this light. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that exists, of course. But consider this. That note was written... Like, what? E I'm pretty sure years ago. Didn't... Didn't Grandpa Batchin die years ago? Like, at least a couple years ago? And his note describing using the flashlight to find that paint was written years ago, which means that the paint was put down years ago. And it's just put down on, like, dirt and stone. Like, it it would have worn away. There's, there's no way it would have stuck. No way. Anyway, alright, so I've got to make a decision between following the sun and the moon, which was in the parable. So... I need to go back and actually read it. To figure out which one I need to follow first. Oh, this music's really cool. Yeah, the parable about the... The girl who followed the sun and the moon, alternating back and forth until she found... Buddha, I think? Let's see. So where did she go first? Okay, so she first headed towards the sun. And then she just alternated back and forth, right? Yep, so just sun. Follow the sun first, and then just alternate between the sun and the moon after that. Alright, so the sun is to the left. So, sun. Moon. Sun. Moon. Sun. Moon. Sun. Moon. Sun. Moon. Who am I? That must be the question I've been looking for. Yes, 
Who am I? Am I Enabish? Am I... Zamble, the kid? I'm... Hmm. That only points one way. Oh, that's to this, um... This little letter thing. I've actually already been here, and it didn't seem to do anything, right? Yeah, it's Mongolian Post. The date of last cartridge loaded was a long time ago. Is there still a cartridge inside of it? And it was never sent? The year of, la of last cartridge loaded was actually around the time around the time of the last journal entries, I think. So maybe there's still a cartridge inside. Here you'll find the answer to your question. Yeah, I looked at that before and it didn't... I, I guess I didn't have any questions to ask. Uh... <laughs> who am I? Oh. Wow. That's right, Enabish. Who am I is the question that leads to the secret of your past. You're but a step away from unraveling the mystery. From the ancient, mystifying events whose meaning I never did grasp, till the end of my days. Perhaps only you are destined to reveal their divine plan. I promised you a key to the chests that store your parents' belongings. The key is before you. And with it, I passed to you that which I had guarded in my memory for many years. Well, Grandpa certainly liked his... mysteries. Yes, the things in the chests belong to Zamble and Sarnay. However, these people are not your parents, or even your relatives. They had a son of their own once, but he had died in that explosion under the dome. He was five years old, and his name was Chigate. Several days after the explosion, a golden eagle arrived here, carrying a human infant. He set the child down on the ground in front of the yurt. You were that infant, Enabish. Who you are and where you come from, I do not know. Oh my god, so Ongots is way more important than just a bird that happens to be around here. I thought Ongots felt strange. You know, with my whole weird, like, my weird hypothesis based on nothing that perhaps someone's consciousness, consciousness had been transferred into Ongots. I thought Ongots was special somehow. And that explains the whole feather thing. Remember how feathers appear beneath me? Whenever I fall down? You know, fall down such a distance that it, that it would normally be lethal? Yeah. Because Ongots set the child down on the ground in front of the yurt, so Ongots had carried me at one point. So, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. Obviously, Ongots isn't strong enough to actually carry, you know, me, an adult, adult-weighted person <laughs> who probably weighs like 140 or more pounds. Obviously, he couldn't actually do that, but I, I think it's kind of a, just a reference to the fact that Ongots, you know, brought me here, and Ongots is watching over me, probably. I think that's what it is. That or I actually am a bird person. From that day, the home of my late son became a haven for you and Ongots. I was not repulsed by the strange appearance of your bodies. Who am I to pass judgment on Providence? This may came a month later, when Jigate's features on your face became unmistakable. Goodbye forever, your grandfather, Bachin. Jigate's features on your face became unmistakable. So it's like I was a replacement for Jigate. Like, Ongots had saved me. Saved Chigate. Like, okay, maybe my consciousness was transferred into this child's body, I, I guess, sure. Even though I thought you're not supposed to transfer the consciousness of children, but still, let's say that happened. But what about the physical features? Why would my physical features be the same as Chigate? What does that mean? That is very strange. Empty envelope. 
That is very, very strange. What the heck is this? Something you put on a horse? Like a saddle kind of thing? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> what the heck is this? Little TV? Stacks of magazines. I'm guessing this is the important part. No, this doesn't matter either. So I guess unlocking that was just to take all the weight out of it. Just so I could then move it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm breaking everything. Alright, there we go. Wait, so you're telling me the only way I could the only reason I couldn't get to my not actually parents' secrets is not because this chest was locked, but because the chest on top was kinda heavy? Okay. So there's Chagate, Sarne, Bachin, and the father. What's the father's name again? Zamble? Zamble, Bachin, Bachin, Zamble. Packs of letters. One correspondence mentions Mark and Ida. Whoa, okay. This is important. I've already written you about him. He works nearby, at the station. Well, a few years back, he'd met a girl. He says they saw each other only once, in the company of friends. And somehow, the way she looked at him, he's been dreaming of that moment ever since. Mark speaks of some strange sensation called the Babylonian Effect, and that the entire Institute is studying it at the present. Zambal and I laugh in return. The sensation is totally normal, Mark. We've studi studied it thoroughly long ago. Kick your science to the curb and go to Ida before she gets her body replaced. Okay, so that's, I guess, the incident Mark was talking about. He saw Ida just once and felt some sort of telepathic connection. He must have played some part in getting her to actually come there, right? and getting Ida to come to the Institute, to the Gerber Gardens. Anything more, or is it just that one? Yeah, just that one. Okay, I'm guessing I should ask Ida about this, see if that can jog her memory. Yeah, speak with Ida. I found it. You and Mark had met once before. Yes, I already know. I remembered it. Mark was recalling some kind of special moment. 
Nothing so special that it stayed with me. Except, maybe, there was this strange sensation. A sensation? Yes. Sometimes I get a peculiar feeling. It somehow resembles anxiety, but only partially. I can't really describe it. It is a sad, pleasant feeling. I had felt it again that particular evening, and... And what? Anabish, I'm about to shut down. What? From what? Her batteries, she said they'd last about two weeks. It's gotta be something else then, right? Wait. We're not done figuring out your past. And we won't. I am out of time. I... received a message. From whom? From my neurochip. Only, the neurochip writes in red letters. I'm being informed that it is self-destructing. Know what I can do? What? Split myself in two. Uh, what? What do you mean? When I shut down, my upper half will split from my legs. Why? I have no clue. That's just how my body works. I can show you. Watch. This doesn't sound good, <laughs> but if you think so, you know your body better than I do. Wait, don't. Ida, listen. I'm listening. Maybe there's still a way to fix everything. Fix everything? Well, there is a way. If you can travel to the past and pass four digits to Professor Koch, that would fix everything. Fix. Everything. I guess she did split herself in two, but, I mean, did I fall asleep and then wake up into a nightmare world? Ugh. She's twitching. Alright, so she's in her legs now? Shock with electricity to speak for a few minutes. Ida's, Ida's neurocopy is destroyed. You can bring Ida to her senses by aiming an electrical discharge at the nerve plexus on her back. Take Ida to a powerful source of electricity. Tabaha did say a storm was coming. Do I need to take her to somewhere where she's gonna get hit with lightning? Oh god, I think that might be it. Okay, um, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, actually. As much of a kind of cliffhanger as it is, and a very disturbing note to end on. Alright, so, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm gonna try to help Ida out, and see if I can bring her back to life. <laughs>